Welcome to day 19 of Flexibility 30 Days of Tai Chi dedicated to breathing out stress. In today's session, we focus on using Tai Chi as a tool to release stress and cultivate a sense of calm and relaxation. Stress, whether physical or mental, can greatly affect our well being, and Tai Chi offers an effective way to manage and alleviate it. This practice is centered around breathing techniques and combined with gentle Tai Chi movements that encourage the release of tension. As you move through each movement, concentrate on your breath, allowing it to guide you into a state of deeper relaxation. So as always, don't worry about getting the movements perfect. Just follow along. I'll be your mirror image. You can have a seat at any time. We'll begin with the feet together or as close as you can. The hands can come to the lower abdomen. Just centering, taking a few moments to feel into the body, coming in to the present moment. And then from here, you can step one foot out to the side, either foot. The hands come right out in front, palms face towards each other in front of the heart. And as you breathe in, the hands open slightly, and as you breathe out, the hands come back towards each other. This time, open a little bit more. Coming back in, and this time, big opening, accordion breathing. Another round, starting off small, and then a little bit bigger, and then big opening, one more round, accordion breathing. Opening small, a little bit bigger, and then big opening. And then from here, the hands drop down and brush out to the sides. Coming up to shoulder height, and then back down. Coming up the center line, breathing in. Breathing out, cleansing the lungs. Clearing out old stuck energy that's no longer serving you making room for the new. Breathing out, breathing in. One more time, cleansing the lungs. And this time, circle all the way around and hug the tree and soften. The arms open up wide, the hands float down, the palms face up. They float right up the midline of the body, pressing up overhead, and then floating all the way out and down, holding up the sky. Breathing in, rising up, breathing out, floating down. Feeling all the sensations that you can, opening the shoulders, opening the chest. One more time, holding up the sky. All right, this time the hands float up to the heart. One hand pushes up, the other pushes down, connecting sky and earth. And then switching sides, keeping the spine neutral at first. And then this time you can do a side bend, but just easing in, never forcing it. And then once more to the other side, connecting sky and earth. Bottom hand comes up and then push to the corner. Other hand pushes behind. Coming back to center, push to the other corner. The dragon spreads its wings. Gentle rotation, nice and easy. One more time. The dragon spreads its wings. This time the backhand swings around as if it's gliding on the surface of water. The other hand comes around as the dragon swings its tail, sending little ripples out into the distance. Breathing. One more time. This time hug the tree, bring it back to center, and soften. From here, the arms open up wide. This hand scoops under the other one on top as you embrace the moon. Then the bottom hand floats up overhead. The other hand pushes down by the hip and then circle it back around. Catch the moon. Bottom hand floats up and then lean over to the side going up. All right, this time as the bottom hand floats up, the opposite foot touches down in front, tapping down the toes. Step back in. Embrace the moon, step back out, white crane spreads wings. Breathing in, <sighs> breathing out. All right, one more time, white crane spreads wings. All 
side. This time we'll spin the moon, so switching sides. Then the bottom hand comes up, other hand comes down to the hip, leaning over to the side, going up. Coming back to center. One more time with just the arms. All right, this time as the bottom hand comes up, the opposite foot touches down in front, tapping the toes. Step back in, catch the moon. Step back out in front, white crane spreads wings. Breathing in, <sighs> breathing out, All right, one more time. Beautiful. This time the arms open up wide, the hands float down, the backs of the hands face each other, they float up the midline of the body and then drift out to the side, the fountain. Breathing in, rising up, breathing out, letting go. Moving like water, soft but powerful. <sighs> One more time, the fountain. And then reverse direction with the arms, circle in front, hug the tree. From here, the arms open up wide. This hand here drops down and drifts over to the other side. The hands switch positions. Then they float across like clouds in the sky. When you get to the corner, the hands switch again. Wave hands like clouds. Drifting across, letting go. Nice and easy. Nice and slow. This time, step in as the top hand makes a hook. And then step out, the bottom hand floats across the horizon. Palm turns out and then circle it back around, single whip. All right, one more time. You can always soften the hook arm if it gets tired. And then from here, we'll reverse direction. So the hand comes up and over, presses down, scoops through, and then back up. The snake creeps through the grass. Once again, circle it around, coming down just as much as you can comfortably. Letting go of striving, being kind to yourself. And then from here, release the hook. Let it drift over. Cloud hands. Once again, take your time as you step in, drift across. <sighs> Breathing. This time, step in as you make a hook. Step out for single whip. Bottom hand floats across, palm turns out, and then circle it back around. All right, one more time, single whip. And then release the hook, the hand drifts over, cloud hands. Take your time stepping in, drift across. <sighs> Letting go of any tension you don't need. We learn to move like nature with effortless ease. One more time, cloud hands. And then from here, hug the tree, bring it back to center. The palms face down, drifting down to the waist. Then as the hands come forward, the hips go back. The arms go all the way out and around, and then back in. As the hips come forward, then the hips go back, softening the hips and knees pebble in the pond. Once again, sending waves out in all directions. Breathing in, <sighs> breathing out. One more time, the pebble in the pond. This time the palms face up, one hand on top of the other, then this hand floats up and over, down the center line of the body. Other side, breathe in. The hand floats up, breathing out, centering. Creating focus and clarity, creating presence. One more time, centering. This time both arms float up and over, just as much as you can. The hands float down to the waist, circle in front, gather in the energy. 
Bring it into the heart. One more time, open the heart. This time make a diamond shape with the hands in front of the heart. Press out. Send out all your loving kindness to the world. May all beings be free from suffering. May they be happy. May they be healthy. May they live with ease. Turning your palms to face yourself, the hands come to the heart. May I be kind to myself. May I feel connected with all beings. May I love myself just as I am. And the hands can float down to the lower abdomen. You can step your feet together or as close as you can. Closing your eyes or keeping a soft gaze, let your body rock and sway like bamboo in the wind. Very gently letting go. Just feeling the gentle rocking motion, feeling the breath. And then bring your attention into your heart, creating an inner smile. Expressing gratitude to yourself for being here today. And then if your eyes were closed, you can slowly open them. The hands can come together in front of the heart. And we can finish with a bow. I thank you all so much. Once again, I'd love it if you type in the comments how you're feeling. Or if you have any questions, I'd love to hear from you. All right, and then stick around for our exercise of the day, the standing toe touch. All right, so one thing that people often have are tight hamstrings. All right, now a lot of times it's actually building core strength that helps the hamstrings, but it's also good to stretch them if they are tight. So what we wanna do is what's called the standing toe touch. This is the easiest way to do it. It actually is a nice test too. All right, so what you can do is stand with your, actually I'll just show you from the front, but stand with your feet if you can, all the way together, but if you can't, just as close as you can, and that'll be your testing point, because you wanna test to see how far you can go down. So this first one is just to see how far you can go down. Now I'll show you from the side. And so what you're gonna do is just slide your hands down your legs, your hips go back so that you bend forward. Just slide your hands down, but keep the legs straight. All right, and then just see how far you can reach down. All right, so I'm like pretty much by my lower shins. So I would say, or maybe mid shin. All right, so I would just keep a mental note, like, okay, I can get to my mid shin. All right, now I'm gonna do it as an exercise. So with this one, you might wanna do it where there's a bench or a couch behind you in case you lose your balance. You can just sit down, or a chair without wheels. So. <laughs> All right, and so we'll do this as an exercise. So I like to do it with my feet a little bit wider though. All right, so that way I have more stability. All right, so when you find a good position, then we'll do 10 reps. And all you're gonna do is start by hinging from your hips and then reach down as much as you can and then come back up. We'll do that 10 times. All right, so you can go your own pace. You can keep a slight bend in your knee if that feels better for you. All right, so with this one, you wanna just do it in a way that doesn't hurt. All right, and so just coming up and down 10 times, or five to 10 times. All right, we'll just do that and see what happens. All right, that's, I think that's six or seven. What does it say? That's eight. All right, nine and 10. All right, so now we'll retest. All right, so I'm gonna bring my feet together. That's for how I tested. All right, and then I'm gonna reach down my legs. All right, and now I can get a little bit lower down to like my lower shin now. So, so what I'll do now is see if holding is better. All right, sometimes just doing repetitive mo motion for the this one can loosen things up. But you could also just try holding. So you start with your feet a little bit wider apart and then just bring your arms down and then hold, breathing. Now, if you have blood pressure issues, then this might be something that's hard for you. So you could also do it sitting down, all right? So we, we've, I've showed that one before, I think it's the seated hamstring stretch. So I'll show you that one in case the standing one doesn't work. All 
All right, so if the standing one doesn't work for you, then you can do it sitting. All right, so you just stick one leg out, and then you reach down and try to touch that leg, and you can feel that, you should feel the stretch in the back of the leg. But what you wanna do is hinge from the hips. You don't wanna round your back. All right, so keep your back straight, and just reach until you feel a light stretch. Then you're gonna hold for 10 to 30 seconds. All right, then you do the other side. So straighten the leg, hinge from the hips without rounding the back, and sometimes that's enough to feel it. All right, so you might not even have to. And you can point the toe. If you point the toes up, that stretches the nerve. So if you have sciatica issues, you might wanna point the toe down so that you don't bother that nerve. But if you pull it up a little bit, you might feel more of a stretch. That's more of the nerve though. So if you are pointing the toe up, you might wanna go in and out gently because the nerves don't like to be held for too long. The muscles do, but the nerves like to be glided in and out, just like that. All right, that's why I like to do the, the repetitions for this one, because sometimes the, the sciatic nerve can be an issue for some people. So. All right, so either way, you always wanna do it to where you just feel it lightly. All right, and that way you don't overstretch. All right, you can do either repetition, so 10 reps, nice and slow or you can hold for 10 to 30 seconds. So find which one works best for you and work with that each day. If you get sore, remember to always take a day or two off. So today's quote is from Eddie Hellesom, who said, sometimes the most important thing in a whole day is the rest we take between two deep breaths. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video.